Welcome to the ECC Podcast, your latest source of news for health and fitness. Follow us today and learn some great things. So everyone, welcome on to the ECC Podcast today. I just want to give a quick shout out to some of our sponsors for making this podcast happen. Mainly uh, Utah State University is a sponsor of this podcast today. really want to thank them for all they do. If you are looking for a good education, uh, beautiful scenery, get out to Utah State and uh, get your education there. Great recreation opportunities and great uh, schooling as well. So we're just going to jump right into our topic today. Today we are going to inform you a little about your personal health and some steps we can use to prevent Alzheimer's disease. And today we have brought in a special guest on the show. Wait, wait, you can do whatever you want. But anyway, so uh, we're really excited to have her on today. Carly Clark is her name, and she has been studying Alzheimer's disease at Utah State University as a student, and she is really knowledgeable about the subject. I've heard she's been traveling around the country, giving some lectures on this, and helping uh, get better understanding about this disease that will affect many of us in our older years and even our younger years if we have older people who we're caring for in our life. So we're going to dive right into this and hope we can learn some great things. How are you doing today, Carly? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for that introduction, Ethan. I have just been so busy. I actually just got home from Chicago. I've been traveling all across the country just informing people about Alzheimer's disease specifically the sandwich generation. Um, are you really familiar with that generation? No, I, I don't think I've ever heard of that. All right. That's, that's a common thing I found. But the sandwich generation, it refers to someone who still has kids at home, but they are taking care of their elderly parents while taking care of their kids. Um, I've studied so much about this, and I'm just so glad that I was able to stop and be a guest on your podcast. I appreciate this opportunity. Well, we are happy you could be here on the ECC podcast. Uh, once again, shout out to our sponsors, Utah State University. But uh, could you just maybe give everyone a quick, brief description of what Alzheimer's disease is? I know most people are probably familiar with it, but just in case anyone out there doesn't yeah, know yeah, exactly sure. what it is, we could oh, uh, yeah. get them up to date on that. Yeah, of course. Um, So Alzheimer's disease, did you know it's actually the sixth leading cause of death in the United States? Oh, no way. You're kidding me right now. Yeah, no one even talks about it, though. Um, So that's why I just I have such a passion about it. I just want to inform people about it. So I'm just going to describe the effects of Alzheimer's disease through my good friend Nicholas and his story. He their family brought in Um, his grandmother to live with them and she had just a minor case of Alzheimer's disease but throughout the years it progressively got worse Um, you know Nicholas had a great relationship with his grandma they would do the daily crossword puzzle the newspaper just your typical grand grandson and grandma relationship well one day he shared this story that he was getting her a glass of water from the sink and as he presented the water to her she she looked up at him and just said, of all people, I never thought this would be you. And how do you respond to that? I mean, how, what, is, what is going through her mind? He doesn't know. He's just a young kid. So he said, well, Grandma, I'm confused. And you will never guess what she even said next. She said she accused him of poisoning her when all reality he was getting a glass of water for her. So... This is just one short story of what it's like to live with someone who has Alzheimer's disease and how it greatly impacts their memory function and their ability to even function throughout the day. It's a progressive disease. It slowly attacks one's um, cognitive and brain function, and it will lead to confusion and short-term memory loss. Wow. I mean, that is that's a rough story. I definitely I feel for... Uh... Our buddy Nicholas there, uh, and I is I I just imagine my own grandma saying that to me, and I'd definitely be confused, and I'd definitely really my heart would go out to her. I'd feel really bad for her. That'd be a sad scenario. So, uh, I mean, I I've heard stories, and that is definitely one of the stories to add to my book of stories, and that's why we're talking about it today. I'm glad I could have you on. So, uh, is there a cure for Alzheimer's, and what's the cause of this? 
That's a good question. Um, actually, we don't even know the cause of Alzheimer's 100%. There is speculation, but not 100% cause. Um, we do know genetics do play a huge role, though. Um, because we don't know the cause, we there actually is not a cure to Alzheimer's disease. I don't know if there'll ever be one. I cannot say to you with 100% sure that there'll be one. I mean, I hope there will be, but I'm not for sure. But the good news is my research, I have done extensive research to find preventive steps to um, Alzheimer's disease. Oh, that's great. You're doing all this research. But uh, so you're saying that if we're born into a family that maybe has a history of Alzheimer's disease, you may be more likely to get that disease in your family. Oh yeah, definitely. There is a good chance that you will get that. Um, I've known families that they, if their great grandma has Alzheimer's disease and it keeps coming down the line, there is a strong correlation that you will also um, inherit that disease. However, it's not a guarantee. So there's not a hundred percent chance, but there is a strong correlation. Well, dang, that is that can be a bummer for family lines. Then, uh, man. I mean, are there any things they can do to prevent this or slow it down? Definitely, definitely. So that's actually what I've been going around the country, just sharing what I have found to prevent it. Um, A lot of my research comes from the Alzheimer's Association. They are just a great resource for anybody trying to find information, how to help their loved one with caregiving, um, tons of other resources. They just first start out and they just strongly are have a passion about self-maintenance or preventive care. And preventive care in the United States is just, I mean, compared to other countries, we're, we're slacking. We're slacking. I'll tell you that much. But, you know, the United States, they spend on average $8,000 per citizen per year. $8,000. Whereas other countries like Japan, they cut that cost in half because they spend so much time with preventive care. So you're saying when you go to frequent check checkups with our doctor more often is what you're trying to say? Um, yes, that is a step. Frequent checkups, that's a great step. Um, but that's not all. That's not all of the preventive steps. There's diet change, um, increase your exercises, and tons of other things. So I'm going to start out talking about your diet. The association suggests to limit your intake of saturated fats. You may be asking yourself, well, where are saturated fats found? A lot of saturated fats are found in dairy-rich foods and meat. Hmm. That's interesting because I've been reading a book recently and it's promoting that saturated fats are not as bad as they once thought and that meat and milk are important in a healthy diet. So that's definitely a, a conflicting science there, I'd say. You know, you are right about that. It is so important to have meat in your um, in your diet along with dairy. And I'm not saying to eliminate those. In fact, I don't think that you should. I'm a heavy meat eater. I love it. I actually married a dairy farmer. So I'm not getting around, not drinking milk. In fact, I think you should. It just, their suggestion is to limit that. And I think a big, this could be hard for people. Just, um, you know, maybe cut one glass of milk a day or something similar along those lines. Lots of saturated fats, um, they expose your body to other diseases like diabetes. Hmm, that's that's really interesting. Uh... Right, it is a different comparison, diabetes and Alzheimer's, but your brain is actually nourished by one of their body's um, richest networks of blood vessels. So it leads to, if you have an unhealthy heart, your brain will be most likely unhealthy. Um, You should try to increase your daily intake of vegetables, especially those that are high in vitamin folate, like broccoli and spinach, avocados and asparagus. Folate is such a good nutrient because it is actually fuel for your brain activity. Man, that is really interesting. I did not know that. Uh, Change your diet seems pretty hard. What do you suggest for people who are just beginning out? Right. Other than diet changes. Right. Perfect. It is super hard. I mean, it's a major change in your lifestyle. So I just suggest taking little steps each day. Um, every day, just maybe create a small goal that you can accomplish. Don't start out high and dry cutting certain things out of your diet that maybe you um, consume on the daily basis. But just make sure to 
take baby steps. So the next step in prevention I want to talk about is exercise. This can be hard for the sandwich generation, but it is important to schedule a block of time each day to complete it. Oh, that's are you so you're saying like a daily exercise are need is needed or uh how hard are we supposed to exercise? What are you saying? Right. Do? Okay, perfect. So it is very doable. In fact, it, you should be exercising. They suggest it's recommended to walk 3 times a week for at least 40 minutes. This is super doable, especially if you just create a time every, you know, 3 times a week making sure that you're doing this. Creating this habit now will help you um, in your midlife. You'll lead to an active lifestyle in the future. An active lifestyle has actually been proven to improve your memory, your cognitive functions, and also make you happier. That is really good to know. That's some really great uh, advice there. So we have so many resources available to improve our health. I've just seen a decline in health in America, so I think this will not only help prevent against Alzheimer's, but I also think this will help America and its obese rates, which are really honestly off the charts right now. So You're right about that. Definitely. So the next step um, after exercising, after changing your diet is going to be hard for you night owls out there. It's recommended you need to sleep for seven to eight hours per night to avoid your risk of sleep disorders. And this is important because sleep disorders can distort your memory function and how your brain receives information. So setting a sleep schedule is very important. Oh, yeah, that I definitely have seen a huge change in my life when I'm able to get more sleep. And I just want to add the iPhone has a feature installed where you can have your own like personal bedtime and make sure you're tracking your sleep. And when you get up and it helps you just keep track of making sure you are getting rest. And that has been a super big help for me. I'm sure it helps others too. Yeah, that's great. It is so, so important to get adequate sleep. Um, Looks like we're running low on time on this show, but I just want to say the last thing is mental health. It's so important to prevent Alzheimer's disease to having a healthy mental state in your life. Every day, you should dedicate at least 30 minutes to new learning. This can be done by simple ways of completing a hard puzzle, maybe you're learning a new language, um, or reading a book. Um, This is exercise not for your body, but for your brain, which is super important in this common disease of dementia. Oh, that is definitely great. Yeah, we are running low on time, but if people... Want to learn more, where do you suggest they go? Oh, perfect. I'm so glad you asked this question. I actually recommend um, just doing personal research. I've done a lot of research. The Alzheimer's Association is just perfect to reach out, um, learn hard facts, statistics. But most importantly, there's hundreds of support groups out there. Sometimes preventive steps, you can't do anything about it, and genetics can be stronger. But you can find support groups on social media. We know how important those are. You can ask questions for caregiving and other tips um, if for some reason you aren't able to prevent this disease. That is great. Great resources for us, to all you listeners out there. Well, uh, we just need to wrap this up. I just want to thank you so much for coming on the ECC podcast today. I know I've learned a lot, and I'm sure our listeners have learned a lot, and uh, we'll be able to... Uh, take steps so they can have a better future and uh, hopefully prevent Alzheimer's disease in their later years. So- Thank you for joining us today on the ECC podcast. I know I learned a lot and I'm really hoping all you listeners did too. Can't wait to have you all back on next week for our next guest.